So I was thinking a little bit about what I wanted to share with you today. And uh, as you all know, my status has changed. I have always remained a daughter and a sister and a friend, of course, to many, um, but I have added mom this time to my status. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, last Friday, I was able to bring our little Luther uh, to campus, and you're able to see him. He's been growing very well, very quickly. Uh, he's eating well, sleeping well, and pooping well, too. And that's a good thing for babies. That means that they're healthy. So um, it's just been a joy to be able to be a mom um, and to be able to raise him and be with him at home. Um, but of course, I've missed all of you as well, so I'm really glad to be here. So today we're going to be talking about God as the promise keeper. Um, and I was looking at some of the stories in the Bible that I wanted to share with you today. And of course there are many, but I was wondering if some of you have heard of or may be familiar of the story of Elizabeth. Raise your hand if you've heard of the story of Elizabeth. Okay, so we have like three students. All right, so this is gonna be exciting, a nice new story from the Bible. I don't know how many of you know, but Elizabeth is actually a biblical name. Do you know anybody named Elizabeth? No, all right. Well, yes, Queen Elizabeth is somebody who recently passed away. Uh, it's actually a very common name, um, but people don't necessarily know the background story of the story of Elizabeth. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about that and how it ties in with God being the promise keeper. Okay. So right here to our left, we have Zachariah, and to our right, we have Elizabeth. What do you notice about them? They're married. I have no idea how you can tell, but um, they are indeed. That's a very good guess, yes. What else can you observe from this photo? They are old. You can notice by their hair color, very gray, silver, if you will, right? Zechariah and Elizabeth were actually a very godly, wise couple and they were part of the tribe of Aaron, and Zechariah actually was a priest, uh, a Levite priest, and so he was dedicated his whole life to serving God. Um, and so if you notice here, they're a beautiful couple, they're married, and they're old. And one thing that they do not have, yes, very good, a baby, baby. And that was one of the most difficult burdens of Elizabeth. Um, during this time, not having a baby was usually a bad sign. Like, oh, did you do something wrong? Why don't you have a baby? Um, in the modern days, it's a little bit different. You might approach not having children a little bit differently, but during this time, a lot of people were wondering, Elizabeth, what's wrong with you? Zachariah, what's wrong with you? And so they were barren. Elizabeth was barren, and her womb remained empty for a very, very long, long time. Time. And this was very difficult for them. However, um, as you may know, with the miracles that God can perform, yes, it is going the way that you think it is. Now, let me explain how uh, the story continues. So, Zechariah and Elizabeth are faithful, faithful couple to God. And Zechariah, one day, uh, goes to his job, which is a priest. Now, among all the priests, basically what they do is they will... Uh, basically randomly select one priest to go into the temple, into the inner sanctum of the temple, and burn incense for God, to God, right? Kind of like a sacrifice, but you're burning an incense to God. And so there is Zechariah, and he's working really, really hard. And he's in this inside uh, area of the temple, and he's doing his job, doing a good job, and all of a sudden, who does he see? No, he doesn't see God, but good guess. He sees an angel. I know. And this angel comes to Zechariah and says, Zechariah. Zechariah's like, oh, uh, yes, hello? Zechariah, good news. Zechariah's like, good news about God's going to give you a child. He's going to give you a son. Zechariah's like, are you serious? Look at me, silver hair, I don't know. Trust me, 
he's going to give you a son. And you're going to name him uh, John. Let's name him John. Zechariah is like, uh, I, okay, this sounds very exciting. Um, are you sure about this? And the angel's getting a little offended. Uh, yeah, no, I would know. I talked to God, and God said, come here and tell you you're going to have a son. And Zechariah's like, I don't, this sounds a little crazy. And the angel says, okay, do you know who I am? Do you know which angel I am? And he's like, no, I have no idea. I'm Gabriel. Where do we know Gabriel from? Yes. Yes, Mary. Gabriel is the same angel that actually went to Mary to tell her that she is pregnant with Jesus. So he, he has some of the more important jobs from God, right? To relay some important messages. And so Gabriel's like, listen, Zechariah, um, I don't like your attitude. Yeah, you're, you're being very doubtful right now. And uh, I know what I'm doing, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you mute. What does mute mean? Can't speak. Can't speak, yes. And Zechariah's like, what? Yes, I'm going to make it so that you can't talk because you are doubting God. And Zechariah's like, mm. and he couldn't speak, and he could not open his mouth from that moment on. Zechariah goes home and tries to get the attention of his wife. Um, Zechariah, just speak. What? A baby? Are you sure? Okay, all right. And he was right. Elizabeth became pregnant. And it was a miracle, and it was beautiful, and it was something that they did not expect. In their old age, and in this time, mm, seemed a little unrealistic, but yet they celebrated. And Elizabeth actually decided to keep her pregnancy a little bit quieter and as safe as possible. So she stayed home for quite some time. And during this time, she really focused on growing the baby well and staying healthy and resting and making sure that she can have a successful and good and, and safe pregnancy and delivery. Now, during this time, while Elizabeth was pregnant, Elizabeth's cousin decides to visit her. And who is Elizabeth's cousin? Does anybody know? Yes. Mary. I hear a Mary. Yes. So everybody knows about Mary, but they don't really know about Elizabeth. So that's why I want to focus a little bit on her story today. Let's quickly read the passage and Mary with Mary visiting Elizabeth. All right. Let's take a look together. Here we go. Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. <coughs> Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. So what just happened here? Mary came and visited and was like, hi, Elizabeth, how are you doing? How is the baby? And what did the baby do? Leaped, leaped, leapt, leaped, leapt. Uh, what does that mean when you leap? Yeah, kind of like jumping. Okay, the baby didn't actually jump inside the belly. Uh, but for those of us here who have had a baby in their belly, it feels very interesting when the baby is moving in your belly and they do swim around and they kick. And when Elizabeth's baby heard Mary, the baby was basically dancing in the belly. 
I know. Isn't that interesting? And so Elizabeth is like, whoa, 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 whoa. I feel the Holy Spirit, and, and this is amazing. And at this point, Elizabeth knew Mary was carrying the Son of God, right? And so it's such a beautiful interaction. In fact, this interaction has inspired so many art pieces um, through, uh, throughout history. And so one of the pieces that I wanted to, you to take a look at, this is done by Raphael. It's a, it's a little dark, but that's okay. I want you guys to take a look here. It's a beautiful piece. On the right side, we have Mary. And she's also pregnant again with Jesus at this point. And on the left side, we have Elizabeth, who is also pregnant, a little bit older, but they're doing very, very well. And this is called the Visitation. Mary spending some time with Elizabeth as they are awaiting the arrival of their baby boys. So, at this point in time, they continue on, and Elizabeth is almost ready to have her baby. She goes home, and she rests, and she makes sure that she has everything in order to welcome this baby. And it was a beautiful and safe and successful delivery. The baby has been born. Now, during this whole time, what did I tell you about Zachariah? Yes, Daniel. He's still mute. He is a quiet, quiet husband. He's very supportive, but he still has not been able to speak this whole time. Okay? And at this point, the baby has been born, and it's been about eight days. Now, in Jewish tradition, when babies are born, especially baby boys are born, after about a week, they actually go and get what we call circumcision, right? And so this is a medical procedure that's done for religious purposes. So they're going to the circumcision event, and Zachariah is still unable to speak. Family members are there. It's a huge event. It's a huge time, and Zachariah still is unable to speak. Now, the family members have gathered around the baby, and they're like, ooh, he is cute. What should we name him? And they're talking, and they're talking, and... And at this time, it was actually very common to name your child after the dad as well. So they were like, oh, we can just name him Zachariah. <coughs> and Zachariah's like, mm, mm, mm. And everyone's like, what? what's, what's wrong, Zachariah? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so you don't want Zachariah. Mm, 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 mm. He takes out a tablet and he starts to write in the tablet. J O H N. John? Mm, mm. Okay, his name will be John. And then suddenly Zechariah was finally able to speak again. <gasps> yes, his name will be John. That's what the angel told me. The angel? Zachariah, you're crazy. Okay, we'll name him John. And who is this John? This John continues to become John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is a wonderful character in the Bible. Why? He was the one that was able to baptize Jesus, right? So they are actually related, uh, but they don't actually meet until later into John and God's and Jesus' ministry. And so it's such a beautiful story of seeing how both Jesus and John's mothers were actually very close leading up to that. But the promise was fulfilled. And what was the promise that was made to Zechariah and to Elizabeth initially? You will have a son. Does it look like you're going to have a son? Not really. Does it seem biologically realistic? Not really. However, God kept his promise. And God continues to keep his promise. God is the ultimate promise keeper. I want you guys to think a little bit about some of the promises that you have heard in the Bible. He said that you will be, what, loved. That if you believe in him, and you believe that Jesus died for your sins, where will you go? To heaven. These are all promises that God has made to you, that you will not be hungry. 
But you will not be thirsty because of the bread of life, because of the living water that God has given to us, right? I'm not talking about, oh, you really want this toy. God promised me he'll buy me this toy. No, right? We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about the love that God has given to us through his sacrifice of his own son, the son of God, right? What promises has God made to you? What promises has he kept for you? Are you a good promise keeper? Do you make promises to your friends and to your family? And do you break them? Do you keep them? What do we do when we want to show our friends promise? Yaksok. What do we what do we how do we show them? Give me your pinky. Like this, right? And then you hook it to the other person. And then if it's a really special promise, what do you do? Stamp. Right? Onto the thumb. Have you ever made a promise to your friend? I'm sure you have. Do you keep your promises? Or do you break them? So the next time you give your pinky to somebody, the next time you give your stamp to somebody, I want you to think about, will I keep this promise? Will I keep this promise like God has kept his promises to me? Turn to the person next to you. Oh, well, I guess I don't know if it's even. I think it's even. All right. And if you're really, you're really and you're ready, make a promise. Make a promise that you will do your best to love them, to support them. Oh, and some of you are thinking really hard. I don't know. I don't about this. Okay, then let's make it more realistic. Promise that you will try today. Just for today. Let me try to love you. Make a promise. Okay? Or just for the next hour. If today is a lot, do the next hour. Love. And promise that you will try to love them as much as possible. Okay? Let's pray.